Okay, so a lot of talk in the newspaper recently about Tampanese and cash flow problems, and so I thought I'd get on the phone to Krishna, the chairman of the Stags, and find out exactly what's going on. Uh, so he invited me around to his house, and uh, we'll see what the crack is. Why is Singapore so hot? Here he is. Huh. Hey, How are you, bro? Very good. Good to see you. Likewise, likewise. Hey, thank you for your time. Nice house. Right, Christian, so I opened up the newspaper, mm -hmm. a new paper, and it's talking about um, cash flow problems. And Are there any reasons for any Stags fans to be sort of upset, worried? Well, worried, and, uh, for sure, if you don't necessarily understand what cash flow means. Uh, because as, as you and I know, cash flow is, is a problem which uh, plagues all companies. Um, before revenue starts coming through, you have got some obligations which need to be paid out. And, and if a company does not have reserves that it can tap on, you know, then that becomes a cash flow issue. So it does not necessarily mean it's a profit and loss issue, right. but it might be a cash flow issue because you get paid, at, for example, at the end of the month. Right? Sometimes, yeah. And, and you, you go out and buy this beautiful gizmo, right? Yeah. It's $2,000. And how do you deal with your cash flow? It's a credit card, right? But the club doesn't have a credit card. Um, so, but the club gets subsidies from the FAS throughout the year. And, and by all accounts, we have, I think we have satisfied uh, all the KPIs and we should be entitled to 100% of the uh, subsidies that they should be giving us. So I think... Uh, so subsidies are there. Yeah, subsidies are there, but they are drip-fed. You just want fed. them now. Yeah, they're drip-fed drip to us throughout the year. Um, and so to have it up front in a, in a lump sum, or at least in, in more sizable portions, uh, makes it a lot easier for us to start other initiatives which would generate revenue, like our academy, for instance. Hang on, but that, that's, that's kind of a bad precedent, isn't it? Mm. For, um, because all the other clubs are going to want. Yeah, but you know, we are a new club. Yeah. We're a new club. We, yeah. are a, uh, we, have, we are a new management. You know, the management committee has not technically been, been uh, appointed, actually. I mean, it's been identified, but we have not actually had our AGM. We don't, uh, we don't do any uh, jackpot operations. And so, for all intents and purposes, we are a new club. And so, well, what happens if they don't, if they have, if they say, sorry, can't do that? Yeah. You're gonna to have to comply and stick with your original business model. Well, how, how screwed are you? Well, the uh, the problem is we are all agents of the FAS and the S uh, and the S League. Um, we, under the constitution, we are we operate uh, under the direction not under the direction, but under the guidance and the ultimate authority rests on the S-League and the FAS. In every club's constitution, the FAS, the S-League, have the ultimate say. They appoint the chairman. They appoint the management committee. So, you know, you may be my, my, my greatest mate, and if mm -hmm. I wanted you as my vice chairman, yeah. right? Thanks. I couldn't just do that. So right. there is a huge level of, of authority that is asserted by the FAS and the S-League uh, through the constitution that is imposed on all the clubs, which then naturally means that, you know, if uh, they should be looking after the clubs when they encounter some issues. And now we're not talking about fraud. We're not talking about, you know, going out there and getting, you know, 22 Lamborghinis for all, each of the players. Sure. Right? talking about you know paying the players their salaries hiring coaches so if I'm a player am I worried if I'm a player of Tampanese um, I wouldn't be um, because I've um, and what's happened to the old chairman has he pumped in enough cash now well you know he's, he's pumped in a lot of cash he's 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 called it a day um, he's entitled to he's in, he's entitled to um, uh, to uh, to pull out if he, if he wants to and he has actually um, but I've always mentioned right the the personal benefactor model just doesn't work it should not work because 
you know, you rely on one individual who's going to continuously uh, support the club. Whereas actually the model that should work should be academies. Academies, schools, re revenue gen uh, generating schemes from sponsors, bite-sized sponsors. But that's when everything gets going. Now there's a deeper and greater issue about the viability of the S League, right? And right. the product offering of the S League, right? Yeah. You just imagine like the S League is Taekwondo, right? Now, who, who's, who's going to want to watch Taekwondo outside of Singapore? But if you kind of like remodel it as Taekwondo with a bit of MMA, with some females involved, female fighters involved, and then you put the whole social networking scene, then all of a sudden you're reaching a demographic that you're currently not reaching, the 15 to 28 year olds, yeah. the untouched, right? But then when sponsors see that you're reaching that, that yeah. part of the demographics, okay. they're like, hang on, okay. It's worth supporting an SLE club. Hmm. So, so, so you're, you're asking for some help, really, from the from the FAS. You're saying for, from the FAS for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm not denying that. I mean, I, I think you know. Well, so, so it seems fair enough. Like you're doing so much. Look at the you've got the the, the Olympic uh, sorry the national stadium in use. Yeah, and, hey, you know, and it raised the profile. I was talking to a taxi driver before. He knows all about companies now. Oh, really? And uh, and and you know and and uh, and. and People don't realize that you know, they think that I that we are just splurging everything out. But you know, I've been a lawyer for 20 years, and I negotiate a lot. Sure. The, the national stadium is virtually free. Wow. You know, pennant costs you know 20,000 a month, not yeah. 50, 60,000 as people reported, right? Gerard Houllier is free. I mean, he's he's happy to help out yeah. and give his counsel. So none of those supposedly expensive. Um, uh, expenditure right uh, were really expensive or even cost them anything but look what it did for Singapore football branding yeah. right have, have has a Singapore club ever had more than X number of hits worldwide sure am I doing interviews with the Singapore chairman Singapore am I because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't before I give you the tip <laughs> You right, know? right, right. So, it's good. so yeah, I know. So, and 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 to be fair, you know, and and you, and that was a very astute observation because first few months, you know, I was like getting, you know, <laughs> Lim Chin and you know, and Zai and Winston, they were all saying great things. Well done. You know, this is exactly what we needed for Singapore football. Right, right. And so I'm calling in my chips now. Yeah. Right. I'm saying, thank you very much, guys. Um, let's see what we can all now do for Singapore football because this great club, Tampines Rovers need some help now right okay right that was the sweatiest interview <laughs> ever uh, I'm gonna edit that now I'm um, I mean it seems fair enough right what, what he's asking for I think that um, you know he's got a lot of pats on the back trying to do some good things of course with the business there's always cash flow problems so you try and sort them out I mean I, I don't know how bad it is or how how it's going to pan out but um, I don't think there's any harm in asking the FAS for some help right and then we all go down to uh, the National Stadium and support Tampines against Selangor